G'day, I'm Gavin from Hurley's Fly Fishing and welcome to our Melbourne store. As you can see, it's the largest outlet of fly fishing gear under one roof in Australia. So whether you want waders, rods, reels, lines, leaders, tippets, hats, shirts, whatever you want in fly fishing, we're going to have it here. So if you get a chance, pop in and see us down in Bentley in Melbourne and we'll look after you. Funny how a day pans out. <laughs> G'day, I'm Gavin from Hurley's Fly Fishing and welcome to another episode of On The Fly. Today we're over in New Zealand. You've seen a few of our shows over here and it's an incredible place to spend some time fly fishing. We're over here a little bit earlier than normal. This is in January, which is a great time, particularly if uh, you've got school kids and want to get across here and, and do some fishing. This is the perfect time to be doing it. You'll notice with a lot of these Southland rivers, they're literally lined with willow uh, trees. And one of the benefits of having willow trees all along here is they have like a little willow grub. And that drops out in the, the months of late December into January and even through February as well. So it's an amazing time to be walking up the centre of these rivers and searching the underneath of these willows. And the fish there, they get pretty, uh, well, let's say drunk on them. They get really focused on these little willow grubs because they must be fantastic to eat. And you can get pretty close to them. Uh, and plonk out this willow grub pattern and they come up and woof it and take it, you know, as if there was no tomorrow. So it's a great time to be over here fishing. I'll show you a few closer up and you'll see if that's something you'd like to do as well. Now this is a typical New Zealand guide's fly box. Quite a few of everything, but uh, in mine we only keep the ones that work. In particular, what we're focusing on today is these uh, yellow willow grubs. Uh, we'll also have some green ones as well. And if they're a little bit off on those, we'll always throw like a, a, a blow fly. But these work particularly well. They must float, um, particularly when you, when you plonk them out in front of a fish. And also like a little bit of a, a splat when it hits the water and it attracts the fish's attention as well. So have a range of different flies, because if they're not uh, falling at the moment, you might be able to get some on a spent spinner or something. So have all the flies you're gonna need for that day and you're gonna uh, be pretty successful. Now we've just uh, literally walked over to the first willows and we've got a, quite a few fish running around here. Um, there's some at the back that are not necessarily waiting under the willows, but uh, they'll certainly take one, if not just from memory. But let's just plonk out this fly and see how we go. Another one here, plonk it out. Coming up to it, there we go. And that's literally, he doesn't know what's going on, he's coming to me, that's literally what it can be like. Um, we've been fishing here for, I don't know, is it a minute? Uh, and you can see a fish and they're scooting around, they're really, I, I seriously think it must be like top wild. Top of to me is what willow grubs to these fish are, are like. They certainly react and, and know that's the splash that normally happens when a willow grub falls. And it'll be a good fish. The, on the Matara River, I guess the, the average size is probably, you know, three up to, up to five is a really good fish. Um, but you just don't get sick of catching, you know, three, three and a half, four pound fish, you know, on a dry fly on a day like this, you know, it's, um, it's pretty good fun, pretty good fun. We'll just get him in. I like to use a six weight. Generally with most of the fishing I do here, unless you need a really precise uh, presentation. A six weight's much better to punch into the wind and to get this fish in fast. When we get him in, get that hook out and get another one. It's much better for the fish as well. If we can do that, get him in the net and that's a pretty good start. So that's what we like to do um, over here on in, um, in Southland in uh, you know, January. It's a great time of year to be over here. So if you've got, you know, your kids are on school holidays, get across here. Do a bit of fishing because it's going to be something you're really going to love. Great little tool I use this catch and release right on that fly eventually. 
and it just pushes against it uh, without harming the fish too much as well. So uh, good little uh, instrument there. And that's literally over in pretty quick succession with a, with a nice fast weight rod. Uh, this is a, a stalker glide in a six weight, which is terrific for this style of fishing. We'll quickly get him out and just give you a quick look. It's important not to keep him out of the water, particularly uh, in this weather when it's a little bit hotter. We don't want to spend too much time with this fish out of the water either. But, uh, for everybody at home, lovely little fish, he's easy, three pound, lovely brown. We'll send him on his way. Perfect. That's good. And the good news is, there's plenty more all along this uh, riverbank. And uh, looks like I've got the right fly to do it. Just got one just out there. I'll just... You'll go, what a surprise. Oh, why didn't you eat that? I like... Flat, come over. Yep. Oh, and uh, that can happen. Don't catch them all. That one's with them. There's a few more up there. But he just liked that splat to come down. And uh, sometimes you might look at it and decide it's not what he wanted, but it happens with repetition that he decided it was. But uh, anyway, it can happen. Just got a few of them up here. Sneak up and get a little bit closer to them. They each will have their own little uh, territory, that their own little house, I guess, and they'll work that area. And um, a bigger fish will will chase out the smaller one because he knows that's the best feeding area. So uh, some will just stay in their own little area. We've just got to make sure we put the fly into that area. We've had interesting quite a few casts at this one and he doesn't take it. I suspect that's the one that we casted before and, and hooked. And he, he'll look at that yellow fly now and go, hang on, that's got a bit of metal in it. I don't want to eat that one. So you can either change, well there's two here now, but you can change flies and uh, just color or size or just find another fish. Like that and then that's um, a little bit easier too if you can just find a different fish who hasn't seen that fly then that's uh, a lot easier too than changing flies so it's good when a plan comes together anyway you've got to have a theory and fly fishermen are the best theorists there are so uh, this worked out pretty good but we'll get him uh, in in a sec because there's still another two or three just in this little area that are dying to see that willow grub Little jump. It's interesting they say that you know browns don't jump. I've seen a lot of browns, they certainly do jump, you know. So uh, and I would too if I had a hook in the mouth. No, they're good, good fighters. I always like to, like what we're doing now, get get that the fly line back on the reel. So uh, you're not getting it tangled around your feet. Now this one's pretty placid as it is, but if you get a bigger one and he's uh, as it as it hooks on me. But if he's running and jumping and ripping out line, you can get it literally hooked on everything. So uh, you often pay a lot of money for a decent reel. That's a Galvin, which I think are the best in the world. Um, but you, you make use of it. It's got a good drag system. When it needs line, it'll pull it out. You just let that reel do the work. And uh, that's what I think is the most important thing. Get it on the reel when you can, because if he tears off, I know the braking strain of that uh, tippet and the reel's gonna look after it. He'll just pull line as he needs it. So that's a good way of doing it. So we'll get him in and uh, get him back and get another one. Hello, mate. Good, lovely little fish. Probably uh, two, two and a half pounds, but again, sight fishing. Um, and I think the more fly fishing you do, the more important this sight caper is. So uh, 
you want to see the fish, come up with a plan of what's going to um, get him to take cast to it. And you see it all un unfold as he swims over and eats it and you strike and set the hook. And it all works out pretty good. So um, I think New Zealand, because the water's so clear, it's just so great for that style of fishing. So uh, it's all pretty good there. And that looks like that fly's come out in his mouth once we've got him out of there. Oh, hang on, mate. I'll just quickly. That's just a lovely fish there. Oh, actually, he's two and a half. Actually, he's probably caught to three. So just a beautiful fish. Stunning colours. But again, not too long out of the water. And if we do hold him up, we can just get it. He's good to go already. But uh, you hold them upstream, let that water come through the gills, oxygenate them again. They get plenty of uh, go left and off they go. So uh, that's good. Uh, and we've moved 10 metres. It's pretty tough, this uh, Southland fishing in uh, January. So pretty tough. Another one just here. Right over to it. Beauty. That's uh, pretty good. Works out really well. I mean, <laughs> just under that that uh, that willow tree, there must be plenty of grubs. I'll I'll actually show you what a willow grub looks like um, in a minute. But they are just whoa! As he just goes <laughs> almost around the uh, camel woman's legs there. But um, they just so excited to, to hear that plop and that's to their, that trout anyway recognition that that's food that's the dinner bell to them and they scream over there and it looks a little bit like what they want to eat and the way they go so uh, pretty good fun pretty good fun and it's so good here it's got everything I mean New Zealand really is just an amazing place um, I mean we're based in Lumsden like at our, our shop there and our, our lodge where we do our trips from Here's probably about 15 minutes drive uh, through stunning countryside. So it's not uh, like a boring trip, you know, through plenty of um, stoplights and, and all that sort of stuff. It's a wonderful uh, experience even getting here at 15 minutes, you know, and we're at a, a particular spot, you know, 200 metres up the road, you know, she's going to be great. 200 metres down there, it's going to be great. Just... Yeah, when there's other fish up there, you get a little bit too carried away to try and get it in the net. But, you know, what, what you want to do, if it does take off, you have your net attached. So uh, I use a magnet on the back of my um, vest there that it hooks the net up. But it's also on a bungee cord. So if he screams off, I can let the net go and it doesn't float downstream. Uh, and you can let him do his business. And then working back in, when he gets close again, grab that net. And you're all set to get him. So uh, a perfect way to get him into McLean's net. Um, and this certainly weighs them as well, which is uh, McLean's are the best in the world at doing that. And they're made up in Christchurch, a local company here. Uh, and they're fantastic nets. And you just pull that up, you weigh that fish, and you go, oh, yeah, he's three pounds. Terrific. Put him back in. So uh, it's good. It, it ruins a little bit of the uh, fisherman's exaggeration at times, so just be mindful of that as well if uh, you're that way inclined. It's at least six pound this one. Great little tool, catch him, release from America, but it just gets that fly out without damaging the fly, which from a, a retailer shop point of view is pretty silly. We want those flies to be ruined, so you have to buy another one. But Looks after the fly, but more importantly, looks after the fish. And we can just let him go literally without touching him. And uh, just hold him in there and he's good to go. If you can get rid of him out of the net and not really take him out of the water, you've still got plenty of go left in him. Send him on their way, it's perfect for him. And uh, yeah, he'll be fit. He'll be feeding again, you know, maybe tomorrow. That might've given him a fright. Some of these other ones will go back to feeding because there's just so much food around and it's worth the risk. Risk reward. There's so much food here that they're going to go, well, it's worth it. And they'll just keep eating. So it's a great time of year to be over here. Oh, I'm just over by those willows. Here he comes. 
And normally, I would say once that they've refused it, to uh, change flies. Don't keep throwing something that isn't working um, at the fish and expect a different result. But uh, quite often with um, willow crop fishing, it's just a, a repetition thing. And they might think, oh well, it's, again, it's just worth the risk. But with this time, we've had so many casts of this one particular fish, I think that's the original one. I've changed out from a yellow to like a, a light green color. And that just might be the difference to get him to take it. Here he comes. All right, so we've got a little green willow now. We'll just see if that makes any difference. Again, the delivery is important. This one doesn't want to play with that different fly. So you've got a couple of options. Sometimes when you um, have refusals like that and it's about everyone you would have heard the term matching the hatch and that's essentially getting exactly what they're eating and tying a fly or, or tying a fly on that's um, very very similar to it. Uh, the other thing is to put on something ridiculous in compared to what they're eating. And I really love, it's a, a blowfly pattern. So it looks like um, just a, a common um, bush blowfly. has a really bright blue body, but it's not something that they're specifically eating now, but they certainly love to eat them. So you throw something that can throw them off balance and see it and go, wow, you know, why look a gift horse in the mouth and, and eat it? That can sometimes work. So uh, I'm hoping in this instance that this is gonna work because we can't let a fish like that beat me. Well, we can, but it looks terrible on TV, you know, because then everybody sees it, you know, so. Okay, here he is. Change that fly to a little blow fly. See if that makes any difference. Come on, mate. Come on. All right, well that plan's not working, but he's still feeding, so uh, there's a couple of things. Sometimes you just gotta walk away and find another fish or put some time and effort into it and just try and nut out what, he, what he's feeding on. It could also be tippet. I've gone quite heavy um, because, you know, the fish can be pretty, uh, you know, pretty sizable, you know, your four and five pounders. Um, but also around these willows, you can throw a lot of flies up in willows and you can you certainly, not the flies are you know, a life-threatening expense, but you can throw away a bit of money. So to have a good bit of, um, I use fluorocarbon in six pound reverse, which are very strong, and quite thin, but it allows you to, to save a few flies from the willows as well as you know steer that fish away from the willows once you do hook him. But in this very clear water, sometimes you might need to go down a little bit as well. Uh, he might see that line um, floating on the top or, or just sinking there too thick, and that alerts him. So there's a few things you can try before you revert to throwing a rock at him. So although that's sort of still frowned upon, but um, yeah, try something else first. Ninety percent of the fish's diet is under the surface. So whilst we all like to use a dry fly, that's not always going to catch the fish. So if we're using a nymph that sinks down, not everyone's going to see that fish when it takes it. So what we need to use is an indicator, and that's essentially like a float, for want of a better word. So when the fish takes that fly, pulls the float down, we strike, set the hook, and everybody's happy. The one that we use all the time is a New Zealand company called New Zealand Strike Indicator. Now the indicator tool is quite easy to use. We use the hook on the nail indicator tool, slide a section of the pre-cut tubing, makes a loop. Into that loop we put the indicator, pull that nice and tight, that locks it in place and that's ready to indicate to us when the fish takes the fly. 
So use something like the strike indicator. It's gonna put your fly right in front of the fish. And that's how ridiculous sometimes it can be. I just explained, you know, we've tried all the different flies and gone from yellow that he refused so many times, so many times. We'd probably had 20 or 30 casts at it and he'd look at it and not eat it, look at it and not eat it. Uh, so when we went to green, that didn't work. He'd look at it and not eat it, look at it and not eat it. We went to a blowfly, which is, I absolutely love the blowfly pattern. That just works an absolute treat on a lot of these rivers. Um, it just much, must be such a great food item, the blowfly. But he looked at it and not eat it. And I thought about lots of things and he was still feeding, so I went bugger it. I'll go back to the original yellow um, willow grub pattern. And sure enough, first go, chomp. Maybe that goldfish theory, there could be something in that. Beautiful fish, just the same. And it's just a great way to spend a bit of time over here. It's an incredible place, you know, to bring the family and have a look around and uh, just up the road, I mean, we're an hour out of uh, Queenstown. Oh, lovely fish. An hour out of Queenstown, which is a, a great place. You know, there's plenty of things to do regardless of, of, of what age or, or what you, you really want to achieve. And you get down here and spend a bit of time. So, um, I mean, we, we can do some guiding and, and, and hire gear if you only want to do a short trip. We can certainly look after you. And you get fishing like this, it's just great fun, just great fun. So, I'll just get him in. Eventually, what I like to do, particularly when netting a fish by myself, is I have the longer handle. That's the, the longer handle version from McLean's. So it gives you that extra reach. Because uh, this is when you can certainly break them off and break your rod as well, if you get a bit too carried away. But just, you know, take your time, get him in. I like their head to come up like that, and we can scoop him up much easier. You don't want to go duck diving around. So that's a, uh, a good little uh, end result there. So. We've fished this area, it's been fantastic. We've got, um, I don't even know, I'll have to wait till we replay the footage. It's got to at least be, be five or possibly even six hits or fish or whatever. And you go, it's a pretty good way to spend a couple of hours, you know, over in New Zealand. On a lovely day like this, you get some incredible weather. I think it's only about 27, 28 degrees or something like that, but it feels like 35 in Melbourne. It's just a stunning place to be walking up a river with no snakes. Uh, and just have some world-class brown trout that you can come across. So uh, I just love the place. That's why I spend so much time over here working and guiding and, and doing trips because it really is a great place to experience. So um, with a bit of luck, it's, you can get over here and, and, and spend a bit of time and really um, you know, in, in improve as a fly fisherman you know, by, by targeting fish like this and getting to experience it and put it into practice everywhere else, wherever you go in the world as well. So um, it's all pretty good. I'll, I'll get this one off. Get him out, the, probably the pick of him, lovely, lovely fish. And uh, we eventually outsmarted him as well, so that was all pretty good there. I'll just get him out and give you a quick look at him. Just a really lovely, lovely fish there. Just stunning. You know, Southland Browns, you know, he's three and a half pounds if he's, you know, an ounce. Beautiful fish. He's good. He's good to go. So that's just, uh, just I think, a fantastic way to um, to win the, the, the fishing uh, day. Um, lovely rivers that you can just walk up, you know, for days. Great fishing. Um, just stunning scenery as you walk up. And there's places all through Southland for all different ability levels and fitness levels. So we can certainly find places that are gonna suit. So uh, if you wanna come across and uh, catch fish like that over in Southland, New Zealand, let us know and we'll put you on the right track. So thanks again for watching today. I hope you've enjoyed it. It's certainly been great fun bringing it to you and uh, I look forward to catching you on the fly.